One of the lead authors of the IPCC report was San Diego's own Dr. Richard Somerville. He's a research professor emeritus at Scripps Institution of Oceanography, which receives tens of millions of dollars for its research into global warming. The institution has done some remarkable work on the increase of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But where we part ways is whether or not that CO2 is warming our planet. I'm part of an army of more than 30,000 scientists who say definitely not. Dr. Somerville issued a statement at the time of our first special report in January. Here are his main points and my response. The essential findings of climate science are firm. This is solid science. It's been settled for a long time. We know the world is warming. There are many kinds of evidence for that. The air temperature is rising. The ocean temperature is rising. Ice is melting. Sea level is rising. And there are many other chains of evidence. And we know also that human activities are the main cause of this warming. It's not due, for example, to natural variations in the climate. It's not due to the sun. We know that because we've measured how much the sun varies and we measure how much carbon dioxide the man-made greenhouse gas is increasing, and we know that the carbon dioxide is the dominant effect. This is indeed the heart of the debate. Dr. Somerville, Al Gore, and the IPCC members say the science is settled and proven, but nothing could be further from the truth. First, the carbon dioxide greenhouse gas theory relies on a hypothesis called radiative forcing. It says CO2 produces warming, which causes an increase in the water vapor, a much more important greenhouse gas, and both act together to trap heat. But just presenting a theory, arguing its case, calculating what impact it will have if correct, does not prove the hypothesis. Remember, many of the researchers who preach global warming are dependent upon that hypothesis for their livelihoods and the stability of their institutions. Others may just be convinced as pure scientists that this theory is correct. Well, either way, it's proving difficult for many of them to admit the theory is wrong. So what proof do they have? Computer models. Those models use the radiative forcing theory to project future temperatures. And they project steadily rising temperatures. They started in 1980, and into the late 1990s, they claimed the rise in temperatures matched the forecast. To them, that meant radiative forcing is true. But the global temperature stopped rising in 1998 and have been in decline since. That's not what the computer models predicted. Oh, and there's another big problem with the so-called proof. As we showed you in our last telecast, there is extensive manipulation of the temperature data at the National Climate Data Center. That's the information these researchers rely on for their proof. So their findings, based on that history of temperature increases, are now under a serious cloud of doubt. Dr. Somerville also refers to ocean temperatures as proof. Yet the new Argos buoys immediately detected cooling for their first four years. So they're not being used in the calculations. Oh, and how about ice melting and sea level rise? The South Pole is frozen more solid than ever, with the greatest extent of ice as far back as our records go. As for the North Pole, Russian and Alaskan scientists have watched the Arctic temperatures and the ice coverage cycle up and down with the natural cycles in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. It reached a minimum in 2007, and the global warming alarmist issued dire predictions. But ice cover has been increasing ever since. It's up 26% from 2007, this past melt season. And that has put a chill on some of the alarmist shouts. Oh, and that passage of the ship through the Arctic, you may have heard about it. Well, it was a specially designed ship, and its path was cut by two nuclear-powered icebreakers. And sea level rise has actually slowed. It's even below the snail's pace of the last thousand years. Clearly, the melting of the glaciers leads to sea level rise, and the gradual melting of the glaciers that is a natural part of our interglacial period. But the oceans show no sign of rising rapidly, and the totally off-the-wall dire threats Al Gore made in his prediction that the oceans would flood our cities and displace millions, well, they're now looking like pure fiction. 
and I'm fairly sure that Dr. Somerville and his fellow IPCC authors would not endorse that silliness. Also, the greenhouse effect, the science behind this is well understood. It's been understood for 150 years. This is not something that was thought up recently. And uh, the foundations of this science are well known. They're fundamental physics. Carbon dioxide, when you put it in the atmosphere, traps heat. And we know that the carbon dioxide is measuring because we measure it. We know the carbon dioxide is increasing because of human activities. We know that because we can detect the fingerprint of human activities chemically in the carbon dioxide. Once again, this is solid, settled science. No reputable scientist, no expert in this field would dispute anything I've just said. I agree with Dr. Somerville that carbon dioxide is increasing in the atmosphere as a result of the burning of fossil fuels. But Dr. Somerville is incorrect when he says the science has been settled for the last 150 years. Many very reputable scientists, even those who served as reviewers for the IPCC, say that the greenhouse theory is not well understood. What we do know is that water vapor is the primary greenhouse gas in our atmosphere, not CO2. And both satellite and weather balloons show temperatures are not increasing as the IPCC models assumed. The measurement of the atmospheric CO2 by the Scripps Institution of Oceanography is a quality and important piece of science. But I and thousands of other scientists totally reject the theoretical connection between the increase in CO2 and significant global warming. We can observe how the real climate is changing. We can compare that with the forecasts we've been making for years, and they look alike. And in fact, in many observed climate changes, like the rising of sea level, the rising that's actually occurring is near the high end of the predictions. We're in many cases near the worst case scenario. And in some cases, like melting sea ice in the Arctic, the ice is melting faster than even the most aggressive model predictions uh, had forecasts. So we see the validation in the real climate data of the forecasts that we've made. No, Dr. Somerville, your predictions are not coming true. In fact, all of the IPCC forecasts are failing miserably. Globally, Temperatures stopped rising in about 1998, and they've been falling since 2001, as illustrated in this chart. All of the record snow and cold records worldwide, from the United States to places such as Buenos Aires and southern Brazil, South Africa, Saudi Arabia, and South China, belie the warming prediction. Such events were not predicted, and now we've all seen all those snow records set in Washington, D.C., and so many other cities of the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. Even rare snow in Miami and damaging freezes throughout Florida. The Global Accumulated Cyclone Index from Florida State, a measure of the global tropical activity, reached a 30-year low this year. This is in total contrast to the IPCC prediction of more and stronger hurricanes. For strong tornadoes, F3 through F5s, the trend is actually down over the last 50 years. And there is no trend in droughts, though rainfall and cloudiness have increased slightly, which is indicative of cooling, not warming. I think what the world has to do is understand the science, take the trouble to familiarize yourself uh, with it. My thanks to Dr. Somerville for sharing your views. Now, we want you to know that we invited Dr. Somerville or any scientist from Scripps Institution of Oceanography to join us tonight. They refused, saying they felt it would do no good to have one of their scientists debate me because they did not feel that I would treat them fairly.